Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're gonna learn about the Woods algorithm. Now, this is not an out and out tutorial about the Woods algorithm, but a simulation on how it works using string bits. Uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome, so you should probably wait around and check it out. Now, the first step of this tutorial or this video is you must learn or know how to convert integers to binary numbers in a programming environment. So for that, what I did is I have a previous tutorial which I made, which you can check it out in the description. There's a link. Go check it out first and then come back to this video because that part would probably not be explained. It would be skipped, although I would co cover it briefly, obviously, I always do. So yeah, um, that's about it for the start. Now let's get to the code because this is going to be pretty awesome. Also, the reason why I'm not explaining that is because this video will be unnecessarily wrong as, uh, sorry, long as uh, it's not a tutorial but a simulation of the boots algorithm now let's just simulate what's happening okay first number i say let's say two or three and let's say the next number is two so yeah it simulates the boots algorithm over here and then tells you the answer is six and don't worry it also works for negative numbers so if i say three and negative two it will still give me the right answer uh, this is the uh, two's complement form of a uh, negative six yeah it is actually so yeah let's see how this actually works now this is the whole engine which runs this show um now there's a link in the description to a video which actually tells you how the boots algorithm works the complexities and stuff how you know you can use it on a piece of paper and get the right answer and this is just a code implementation of that particular you know video um but first i would like to tell you what other stuff is happening in here so there's a convert to binary now this convert to binary function converts a uh, integer variable, uh, integer value into a string notation of binary numbers, similar to here. So basically, one 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 in string form is basically converted from this integer. So um, those are basically implementations which I don't need to really get into because they're not part of the tutorial a lot because they just have they're just utilities which I use to get the job done. So um, also here, if you come over here, I'm just going to give an overview. First, there's a positive binary conversion, which is a function which converts an integer to uh, a string form of a binary. And there's a two's, two's complement a function also, which is it takes a negative number. Here I'm checking if the number is greater than zero or less than zero, if it's positive or negative. If it's negative, it will run the two's complement method. The two's complement method uh, basically is the same thing as the positive binary conversion, but it then complements the ones with zeros and then increments a binary by one. The increment binary by one function is given here. It's a very well designed function. I think I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of it. Um, at first, if it's the, the last number is zero, it adds a one. And uh, if the last number is one, it converts it to zero and then uses the carry to go through the entire other list. So the range through it and um, the for loop will basically go through the entire list and uh, from the, fr yeah, basically it will do that. And uh, if there's a zero, it will replace it by one because the carry is now added to zero. And if there's a still a one, it's a, it's a carry forward basically. It will convert it to zero because one plus one is one zero, right? Zero remains and one gets carried. Uh, so yeah, this is basically the two's complement implementation. If you wanna know basically what's happening, just go through the code. It's pretty simple to understand. Not that hard at all. Uh, but the real meat of the tutorial or this video comes over here, the add binary. So what I'm doing here is I'm splitting them, uh, splitting the strings. This is basically two strings of binary numbers which I added over here, and uh, I'm splitting them up into lists, and uh, this is an empty list which is added and carry. So for x in range of this number here, this is enormous. So the last parameter here basically tells that we are going from, not from zero to x, but from x to zero. So x is a positive number here in this case. So um, and also, why am I using negative one? Why can't I just say zero? Because uh, it always stops one before. You know, if I say five, it will stop at four. If I say six, it will stop at seven. Uh, sorry, five. Uh, so basically, if you're going in the opposite direction, you still have to give one more than what you have given. So if it's uh, zero, you want to stop at zero, you say negative one because then it will stop at zero. The limit is negative one. And uh, X range, the starting position, you're starting from one less than the length uh, because if you say only the length, then it will basically be an out of index error because that element does not exist. That position does not exist. Um, okay, then if you're adding two numbers, if it's uh, zero, zero, if you're adding zero, zero, obviously I'll say if carry is one and you're adding zero, zero, you just append one and the carry is zero because that's how it works in real life. 
and in two's complement if there is a carry generated after the eighth bit or the fourth bit whichever you're considering it basically is you know you don't consider it or or in addition you do in subtraction you don't um, then you have a zero, zero, 0 plus 1 and 1 plus 0 and if that's the case and you have a caddy which means you're adding 0 1 and 1 and then you append 0 because the caddy is already existing because you generate a caddy yourself so you don't need to explicitly say oh my friend caddy should be 1 even if you do it doesn't really matter because it's already going to be 1 because we are not changing the value of caddy here uh, next if you're if you don't have a caddy you append 1 because 0 plus 1 is 1 uh, everybody knows that and then you have a num caddy 1 plus 1 if you're adding 1 and 1 and you have a caddy 1 you're basically adding 1 1 and 1 so that is 3 ones you're adding you get 1 1 that's the answer and then you append 1 and you're generating a caddy yourself so you don't need to explicitly change the caddy's value and yeah so add it or depend 0 because if there is no caddy 1 and 1 will produce 1 0 the 0 remains and uh, 1 is generated as a caddy and then you pass on and then this loops until you have a basically this is 8 know eight loops if there are eight bits eight loops four bits four loops and that can be con uh, that can be checked basically if you have if you replace wherever there's eight you replace a four it will consider four bits wherever there's eight you replace a six it will consider six bits basically that's how it works 32 even works for 32 that's how awesome this program is um, and yeah if that's a multiplication this is the you know the shifting um, whenever you shift you have to shift the entire row so so the entire row consists of a and q which is the accumulator and the quotient or whatever this is I, I don't even really know what it's called but uh, yeah a and q is what it's called in the program so yeah a and q then you add a and q you put it in num and you split it into a list because this is initially a list you, can, you have to concatenate the list and put it into num and you split the num into a list and then shift it uh, in the program in the description the, pro the, the video in the description links to um, you know what how it works right so that will tell you how this works uh, the first number is kept and then you start from that same number and then you add it again until you reach length minus one um, and then you return two or uh, two strings the first string starts from zero to eight and the second string starts from eight to the rest and that is over here see right shift aq i'm getting a and q again so uh, the boost algorithm basically states that if your last two numbers are zero zero uh, you have if it's zero zero and one one, you don't have to do anything. You just have to right shift. So I'm doing that, not doing anything. Just passing on the neg, uh, neg one values and the neg zero values because those are important. They have to be manipulated again and again because they are different variables. If they were not, I would not have to do that anyway. Um, then if there's one zero, you have to subtract. So what I'm doing here is add binary a comma two's complement for sub. So uh, subtracting something basically means you are adding the two's complement. So that's what I did. I converted into two's complement the string and then added it. So I don't I wouldn't have to write the same function over and over again. Um, similarly, then you have to right shift. If it's zero one, you have to add and then right shift. So this program just is um, a simulation of the boots algorithm. It's not really how it should be working, but it's pretty accurate as to what I think. Um, boots algorithm is done at machine level, and uh, I can't do that because I don't have the correct equipment to show you how to do it at machine level. But the links in the description and this video would you know. It will probably tell you how it actually works, and this will be a good experience for you to try. So, if you have the code, try running it, try making some changes, you know, optimizing it, and yeah, let me know if you liked it. Um, so, yeah, let's run it one, one, one more time because it's so awesome. I always like to see what's happening. Let's say seven and two. Oh, yeah, that is the correct answer. So, yeah, uh, the boots algorithm in form. Uh, so, thanks for watching, guys. This has been a very good experience making this program and sharing it with you guys. So thanks for watching. Later guys.